Hello, I'm Nick. I'm associate fundraiser at Drake Music. I'm a white man in my early 40s uh, with dark brown hair and a black beard. I'm wearing a, a, a red jumper uh, and I'm sitting on my sofa. And I'm here today as part of Drake Music's Digital Connect programme to tell you a bit about the PRS Foundation and some of the funding programmes that it runs for musicians. At Drake Music, we're keen to encourage and support disabled musicians to apply for funding, um, to help develop your careers, to uh, make high quality music and to make great projects happen. Uh, so whether you're uh, an emerging artist or more established, there are opportunities available. Um, and I'm going to talk about a couple of those today. The PRS Foundation is the UK's leading charitable funder of new music and talent development. Since 2000, they have awarded over £35 million to support more than 7,300 new music projects. The PRS Foundation receives um, over £3 million every year from PRS for Music, which is the home to the Performing Rights Society um, and which collects and distributes music or um, dis sorry, distributes money uh, on behalf of songwriters, composers and music publishers. So PRS collects royalties for its members when their music is broadcast on TV or radio, um, performed or played in public, streamed or downloaded. So the PRS Foundation is an independent charity that receives funding from PRS for Music, as well as from other organisations um, such as Arts, Arts Council England. And it uses this funding to invest in the future of, of uh, music by supporting talent development uh, and new music across the UK. The aim of the PRS Foundation is to help songwriters and composers of all backgrounds to fulfil their potential and to reach audiences all around the world. So in this video I'm going to give you a brief introduction to two of the PRS Foundation's uh, funding programmes, the Open Fund for Music Creators and Women Make Music. My aim is to give you a brief overview of these programmes, um, telling you a bit more about what the application process involves um, and the kinds of things that they might fund. I'm also going to be talking to um, the musician Robin Stewart, um, who's uh, a member of the Drake Music family um, who, and who received funding from the PRS Foundation in 2019. The Open Fund for Music Creators. First of all, it's worth noting um, that across all of its funding programmes, the PRS Foundation refers to music creators um, who can apply for funding. So by music creators, they mean songwriters, composers um, and artists, bands, producers and performers who write their own music. And that bit's of key importance. The PRS Foundation does not support performers who don't write their own music. The, the Open Fund for Music Creators is all about supporting the development of outstanding songwriters and composers of all musical genres and all backgrounds at different stages of their careers. So it could be for a music creator who's quite early in their career um, or one who has much more experience. All of the projects need to fulfil the three key priorities for this fund, which are to support the creation, performance and promotion of outstanding new music in any genre. So the quality of music is very important. The PRS Foundation wants to fund the creation of high quality new music. To enable the UK's most talented music creators to realise their potential. This is 
all about how your project will develop the songwriters and composers and musicians involved. So how will this funding and this project contribute to your creative or professional development? How will it help you to build on success that you've had so far uh, and to get you to the next stage in your musical career? And the third key priority is to inspire audiences. So in the application, you're asked to outline who you are reaching and how. Um, this could include audiences at a local, regional, national and international level. You need to think about how you're reaching these people and how your music will inspire them. You can apply for up to £5,000 um, and that funding could support the creation of new music, uh, the, a music creator fee. So that's a fee for you to cover your time uh, and your work. It could fund touring uh, and live performance costs or the costs of, of doing online performances. It could fun, fund recording and release costs um, or creative residency costs. So um, if you're um, doing a, a, a residency somewhere that involves um, creation of, of new music, it could cover, cover that project. Um, or fees to collect creative collaborators, so other musicians or other artists that you're working with. Or promotion and marketing costs, um, they, although they say this is when there is also an element of creation and performance as part of the project. So it can't be just about promotion and marketing. The application process is online via the PRS Foundation grant portal and you can either do a written application or you can submit a video application if that's more accessible to you. Before you start though, you'd need to have a clear idea of what you want to achieve uh, if, you succeed, if you successfully get the funding. Um, so what do you want to do and why do you want to do it? The application form asks you to provide links to your website if you have one um, and your social media profiles. So make sure they're all up to date. Um, and it also asks you to provide two examples of your music. So these also should be up to date, um, not more than 18 months old. Um, and they should de demonstrate the type of music that, that will be created or performed as part of the project that you're applying for funding towards. So you could submit audio tracks or music videos or live performance videos. Just make sure that they're the best and most relevant examples of your work. You're also asked to provide a short 100 word reference from uh, an established music industry professional. So this could be a lecturer, uh, a teacher, a performer, a fellow musician, a producer, uh, or someone at a record label or publishing company. It should be someone who knows your work um, and who can validate you as an artist. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the application process and the application form itself, um, but there are about six or seven key questions that you're gonna to need to answer. They ask you to tell them a bit about um, your success to date, um, potentially to include one or two key achievements. So this could be about radio play that you've received uh, or live performances or tours that you've been part of or collaborations with other artists um, or with organisations, you know, such as Drake Music. You're also asked to explain how the project would benefit your creative and professional development. So how will this project uh, help you to take important step forwards in your musical career? How will it help you to get to the next stage? Um, so think about what you want to achieve ultimately. Uh, and how this will help you to get there. 
You were also asked about why now is the right time for you to have this funding. Um, they want to see how their funding will help you to develop as a musician, um, perhaps to build on success that you've had so far uh, and to reach and inspire new audiences. So you're going to need to think about marketing, promotion and distribution of your music. The application form also asks you to include a project timeline. So when you're applying, you need to think about uh, all aspects of your project to include planning, marketing, delivery and evaluation. Finally, as with all funding programmes uh, and often the bit that artists hate the most, you need to provide a project budget. Um, which should break down how you're going to spend the money um, if you're successful. So the funding could include uh, paying a fee for your time, um, as well as fees for other musicians um, and record or things like recording costs, touring and performing costs and marketing. Uh, the PRS Foundation doesn't fully fund projects. They will make a contribution to the overall total. So your budget will also need to show where else you're getting money from. Um, so this could be for this could be ticket sales for gigs uh, or income from record sales or merchandise sales and downloads. Um, or it could be a another from another funder like the Arts Council um, or your own money. You can also include in-kind support. Um, so this is where you're being given something for free um, that has a monetary value. So, uh, for instance, if you're being given recording time or venue hire uh, for free, then you could include this as in-kind income. The PRS Foundation also recognises that disabled musicians may have uh, access requirements that have additional costs. Um, so you have an, an opportunity to include these two and they're separate from the main budget. So while the limit for project funding uh, from the PRS Foundation is £5,000, any access support costs that you have uh, would be on top of that. So if you're applying for a project with access support costs, then it could mean that you're applying for more than £5,000. Women make music. The second PRS Foundation funding programme that I'm going to look at briefly today is called Women Make Music. This is very similar to the Open Fund for Music Creators. You can apply for up to £5,000 to support the creation of new music, recording, live performances and touring, uh, collaboration with other artists, promotion and marketing. As the name suggests, however, um, Women Make Music particularly supports the development of women, trans and non-binary songwriters and performers. The aims of uh, Women Make Music are to break down assumptions and stereotypes within the music industry by encouraging role models for future generations. To raise awareness of the gender gap and to ensure that women are aware that support for new music is available to them. To increase the profile of women, trans and non-binary artists who are creating new music in the UK to encourage women, trans and non-binary artists who may otherwise not have applied for PRS Foundation funding to do so. So if you're a woman, trans or non-binary artist, then Women Make Music might be the best fund for you to apply to. The application form um, is very similar to the Open Fund for Music Creators. They want to know how this funding is going to help you to take the next step in your music career. 
um, and to support the creation of high quality new music. There are three deadlines every year for both the Open Fund for Music Creators and for Women Make Music. Uh, these are usually in February, June and October. And it takes approximately 12 weeks to make a decision. Um, and they won't fund activity that's already started. So you need to make sure that what you're asking them to fund won't start until after you've received a decision about the funding. So for instance, if you're applying to the PRS Foundation in February for funding to support recording costs for a new EP, you shouldn't be planning to start that recording uh, until at least three months later, so um, the middle of May or after. You can only apply to each of the PRS Foundation funding programmes once per year. So if you're, you apply and you're not successful, you need to wait 12 months uh, before applying again. However, if you are eligible, you could apply to both the Open Fund for Music Creators and to Women Make Music in the same year. As I mentioned before, um, both the Open Fund for Music Creators and Women Make Music are open to uh, artists of all different levels. That said, however, you do need to have been performing or working with new music for at least 18 months to be eligible. And you know, as with all of these funding programmes, the PRS Foundation is very competitive um, and they do expect you to have a reasonable track record, which potentially could include live performances um, or radio play. To give you an example of how competitive it is, in 2019, the PRS Foundation had 4,672 applications across all their funding programmes, and they awarded 533 grants. So only one in nine applications were successful in that year. I think recently it's become even more competitive. Um, I believe in 2020, it was more like one in every 12 applications that were successful. One musician who was successfully funded by the PRS Foundation through the Open Fund for Music Creators is Robin Stewart, who's a musician and promoter who received funding in 2019 to support her accessible music events, Robin's Rocket. I caught up with Robin over Zoom to ask her a few questions about this. So um, my name's Robin Rocket Stewart. Uh, wear a purple hat. Uh, I'm a white woman. I've got purple glasses. I've got hair that's just below my shoulders. I've got a sort of turquoise hoodie on and a ready purple um, neck thing that I can use as a face mask. What did PRS Foundation funding enable you to do? And basically I put on a series of gigs in 2019 at Cafe Otto and my gigs are called Robin's Rocket and I describe them as being inclusive conscious. So what I mean by that is sometimes people exclude people unconsciously. They don't mean to do it. Like when people think about disability, sometimes they think about ramps, um, which is great if you're a wheelchair user. But there are so many other aspects of access that people might need and, and not just artists, but also the audience um, and thinking, you know, even um, thinking about wheelchair access, different wheelchairs are different widths. So you need different you need to be sure that your doors are flexible enough that, you know, they can accommodate different wheelchairs. You know, if you're saying that you're you've got flat access well, there's no point in saying that if you can't get through the door. Um, so you know like things like that like having that awareness that and it's also I don't think it's just about disability so um, my genre if you like is experimental music and experimental music typically is quite white and male and maybe quite middle class um, so inclusive conscious is about really think trying your best to think about how you could make more people feel comfortable and that could be 
um, you know, people from different ethnicities or different languages or different disabilities. Um, but it's just about, you know, really being aware that everyone should be able to come to a gig. Like gigs should not, there's nothing political about coming to a gig. Well, I suppose you could say it's political, but like, you know, when you're putting on a gig as a promoter, you just want anyone to come. Like you don't care where they come from, you know, or who they are. You just want them to come. The only sort of thing that the audience has to be able to do is to um, be open to people being different to themselves. Like I wanted to try and create an experience that was better than the experiences that I'd had going to gigs and tried to lo- sort of eliminate some of the... I realised that not everyone's going to have the same experience. And one of the things about Robin's Rocket is that I, ha- I have a very sort of clear feedback loop. Um, so we have uh, stars, um, like card stars that people can fill, it, fill out with positive and negative feedback. Um, but if they find that a problem, they can also draw on it. But if they need help, they can ask and someone will help them. Um, and we have people in uh, yellow crew T-shirts, the, you know, like they're yellow and they have the Robin's Rocket logo and they say Robin's Rocket crew on them. And I make a point of explaining when people arrive um, that, you know, the people in the yellow T-shirts, you can talk to any of us and you know, like our job is to be friendly like these people are paid to be friendly and they will be nice to you and you don't have to feel frightened of us and if you have any problems or you need any help then please ask and we're always like it's not perfect we're always um we're always looking at more ways so like I think we could be a bit more visual impairment and blind friendly um that's something I want to work on and also um making it more accessible to people with hearing impairments um yeah people who are deaf and hard of hearing um like there's definitely there's more scope I'm certainly not saying that I'm you know that I'm 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 perfect or anything but um being able to like do the ideas that were in my head and then get feedback from people and then be able to act on that feedback because I had the money to do it um like so I was addressing the issues that I'd experienced at gigs but I also knew that a lot of other people had those same issues you know like if you go to a gig on your own, it can be a bit lonely. And I just thought, well, we could have a badge that like sort of says that you're happy to talk to people. Uh, so we've got rocket badges. And when the rocket's up, it means you can approach that person and, and say hello. And if it's sideways, you can only talk to that person if you know them already. And if the badge is down, you can't talk to that person. And people can move the badge position throughout the night so you know like someone was going towards you you didn't want to speak to them you could put the badge down and um, but also when the music is playing you can you, you could put your badge down because maybe you don't want to chat while the music is on like we kind of encourage people to listen I mean we don't enforce it but like definitely some people do put their their badge down some people don't get it like it's new to them but I just thought well maybe that would help people be less lonely and obviously that's not um it's not going to be any good if you're visually impaired or blind. So we need to think about like, <clears throat> that's one of the things I'd like to develop is like, how how could we um, make those things? How could we tactile, you know, offer tactile support or I don't know. The, the Yeah, the, so the funding was to put on three gigs um, and also to have a mix of artists. That was important to me to have like, people with learning disabilities and autistic people playing alongside people without learning disabilities and autism and also people that are well known and people that aren't well known playing on the same bill um so yes they funded me for that in 2019. Did you get any support when you were applying for funding? Yes um so I had support from Heart and Soul um, who are an arts organisation and I also had support from PRSF directly um, so I, I met with Joe who is, is now the chief executive of PRSF um, but I met with him and one of his colleagues and they were really supportive uh, they were really like approachable everybody I met there was just so friendly and that made all the difference like my experience of them was I had someone's email address and phone number that I could just ring up and or email um, and I could ask questions and talk to them. I also think like if you can um, like talk to an arts organisation that understands disability like Drake Music and they can support you. 
sorry um they can support you for it. i think that's very helpful like writing a funding application is an art in itself you know it's like like that's why some people do it for a living um <laughs> because it is it's it's a thing and you have to learn how to do it and um just like when you ride learn to ride a bike i don't know anyone who learned to ride a bike and didn't fall off at least once i mean that's so um so i think when you're applying when you if you don't get funded um then don't feel like that's because your project was rubbish because it's probably not that i'm sure if i hadn't gone in and had that meeting with prsf i wouldn't have known like oh i need to adjust this or i, I need to be clear about this do you have any advice for other musicians who are planning to apply to the PRS Foundation? Um, I'd say start small. I was a bit concerned about the like because they say they um they that they um fund high quality music and I, I was worried I wouldn't be high quality enough, but it turns out I was high quality enough. Um I would say just like network. Um I think having connections like, so one of my connections is Andy Diagram, who plays trumpet um, and he's a trumpet player of James, but he also has this band called Space Heads that I think is really cool. Um, and I just started talking to him at a gig. Um, I just went to all his London gigs and then plucked up the courage to talk to him. And now, so now he's part of my network. And I think having, um, like playing with your peers is really important, but also having experiences of playing with people a lot better than you is really important. Like Andy is a lot better than me, both like technically, but also because he's had just had a lot more years experience. Like he's had like 30 years experience playing, you know, professionally. Um, and so being able to like play with him and play with, I actually did play with space heads as well. So like being able to do that, having those experiences, um, and you'd be amazed at how accessible people actually are. You know, there's a lot of musicians that, you know, are really available and like, and are also really interested in what other people are doing. So Andy mixed an EP that I made. Um, and I think because I didn't have any of the sort of knowledge that other musicians have, you know, through music college and stuff, I approached it in quite a different way and he was really supportive. So I think if you can find people who would be supportive of you, um, but maybe it's just someone with a bit more experience and maybe it's not like a mega superstar, but just someone, you know, who's like, well, you know, well thought of within the industry. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, they don't, have, I guess they don't have to be like a world-class name or anything. They just, it's just someone to learn off. I think that that really helps. I think also um, trying to not be ashamed of your ideas, like have a strong idea. And I think I learned quite a lot about leadership through the funding that I've received because I had a vision, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. I had a vision and I achieved that vision um, but to do that, I had to lead other people and I had to be able to articulate my vision. Um, and I don't think that you have to be a wordsmith type person. You know, you don't have to be good at writing to do that because I'm not great at writing. But the way I'm good at communicating is speaking so I could talk to people. And that was very helpful, having people that could support me. You know, if. but I think also, um, yeah, really just know that I think the majority of people who apply for funding the first time or at any time will fail, but don't think that that has anything to do with your project. There's so many other factors. You have to have a strong belief in the project you're doing. Get If, you've, if you're worried about the quality of your project or the ideas behind it, seek feedback from organisations like Drake Music. Um, like talk to people, talk to other artists and other people. Um, I watched loads of like YouTube videos and went to seminars and stuff like that. Um, I'd highly recommend joining um, the joining a union, like joining musicians union or joining um, what's the other one? The independent musicians ISM. Um, in, I think it's the Independent Society for Musicians. Um, 
like joining a, a union it doesn't have to cost a fortune but joining a union can open up training opportunities networking opportunities um and also i re learned recently that the musicians union actually has a um a group for disabled musicians which i haven't tapped into yet um yeah i do think that like connecting with other people is really important and seeking advice and information and also if you feel like there's a bit of your project where you don't have a lot of knowledge um then see if you can get somebody else and they don't have to do the project for you but like see if you can pay someone for mentoring for that if it's if it's something like say financial management and you just need someone to look at a spreadsheet a couple of times a year and you know just go over if you have any questions about like how you list something within a spreadsheet i mean you can just pay somebody an hourly rate you could pay an accountant for that or someone else um also make sure that you factor in some contingency um like 10 or 15 percent and yeah you might end up giving it back to the funders but also like it is really a godsend <laughs> like like it's really like life saver um and also it can it can make other things possible that wouldn't have been possible otherwise because they as you're planning a project until you actually run it you don't really 100 percent know what's going to happen all kinds of things can go wrong um and sometimes you just need some cash to like buy yourself out of that situation do you have any advice for anyone filling in a prs foundation application um I think you really need to focus on what the actual question is, not what you want to tell them. So I might want to tell them all about how amazing Robin's Rocket is and how important it is and why I think it's great and why people want to come to it. But if that's not the question, then because the question might be about like, well, how are you going to market it? They're not asking you how wonderful are you? They're asking you, well, who are you going to link into? And if you, again, if you don't have that experience personally, maybe you link in with someone else. Like I found budgets, that's the hardest thing for me because I'm rubbish at maths. Um, but, and I think actually, I think I might have made a mistake on the PRSF one, but because they'd spoken to me, they knew I knew what I was doing and also that I had people to back me up. Um, I think getting match funding, I think remember that a lot of match funding can be support in kind, like people giving you their venue or whatever. And actually support in kind can rack up quite quickly. Um, you know, like if you're using a venue and you're not paying a venue hire fee, and if you're not responsible for paying a sound engineer, like you can put all that stuff into the budget. Um, I think, yeah, if you can get, even if you can get a little bit of cash from somewhere else, even if it's your own cash, sometimes that is also very helpful. Um, but yeah, just be brave, be bold, believe in your ideas and don't be scared to seek help and keep going because you probably will have some failed funding applications. But if you keep going, you'll get some ones that are successful as well. Did receiving funding from the PRS Foundation lead to any other opportunities? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, so I've so through the PRSF, PRSF um, I built a relationship with them through getting the funding. Um, so that was good because now I think if I was, if I had a project or something, like they know me, so they know that like I can deliver. So that's the thing. Like just, if you can do a project, even if it's small and not the most exciting project ever, but even if you can do that and you can prove you, you know, you can have a track record, you can prove you can do it. That's really going to help. But yeah, so I built up a relationship with them and that was really good. Um, and again, that was something that I, I spent a little bit of money on because I felt like, oh, well, that's important that they know how I spent their money and I really appreciate them. And also that funding should be both ways, you know? So like, yeah, they're giving me the money, but they should also get something back from me. Like, yeah, I mean, they're not asking for the money back, but you know, they should, um, you know, have something that they can show other people. So with PRSF, I discovered that they get sent a lot of CDs. So I thought, right, I won't send them a CD. Uh, what I sent them was a photo book of like what happened and how it happened. 
um, so that they would have something that they could show future people that was applying. Um, and also I just sent them kind of regular updates to just say, look, you know, thank you very much for the funding. I really appreciate it. This is what we've done so far. If you, you know, and also like inviting them to gigs and saying, you know, if you want to be put on the guest list with the plus one, you know, just things like that. That to me, that was very important. Even if they never give me any money again, like I'm thankful that they gave me some money. I want them to know that. Um, and I also want them to know that, you know, they they gave it to the right person. Like I really, I went out of my way to deliver the things that I said I was going to do to the best of my ability. Um, having the funding and being able to do a project and see it through and then create, you know, like resources at the end meant then it was a lot easier to apply to the Arts Council. But yeah, I think also it just helped with things like getting into the jazz festival I think that gig was partly funded by PRSF so I think like having that and because they already had a relationship with Sirius who put on the jazz festival that made a difference because it just everything was a lot smoother um I think yeah I think also like my personality like I'm just persistent and I also I I like people I'm a very social person and so I want to keep in touch with people and update them and sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming but yeah I just do my best. Thank you so much to Robin Stewart for talking to me and for sharing such brilliant advice. So that's it for me that's my introduction to the PRS Foundation uh, which is a funder providing financial support for the creation performance and promotion of outstanding new music in the UK. To play us out, uh, here's a clip from a short video about one of the Robin's Rocket events at Cafe Otto. What happened at Robin's Rocket? Robin's Rocket happened on the 18th of July 2019 at Cafe Otto. When people came, they got a rocket badge and they knew who staff were because they had their new crew t-shirts. Each of the tables had a table talker that had a little light and told you the timetable in pictures and words. Robin dressed up as a ghost with the valves of surplus value to tell the story of Aubrey Itch. Ariel did live drawings all night with Rucksack Cinema who projected them onto different spaces, including the ceiling. Ariel now has his own t-shirt range, and Robin also has some t-shirts sold at the merch table. Each act started with the Jazz Biscuits, which is Robin Stewart and Andrew Hattonall. We also had the most original covers band, The Unreliable Witnesses. Then, our headline act was Lizzie Emma. She was playing with beatboxer Grace Savage and guitarist and vocalist JB Rose. As usual, the stage looked like a spaceship. We had a front area with pillows and cushions and rugs for people to sit down on the floor comfortably. Robin played trumpet for her guitar pedals. And here's a team photograph of the crew of Robin's Rocket, including our live visual artist Ariel. This video has been produced as part of Drake Music's Digital Connect project. Funding from the Coronavirus Community Support Fund, distributed by the National Lottery Community Fund, along with the Paul Hamlin Foundation and the Garrick Charitable Trust, has helped us to create Digital Connect. For more information, go to drakemusic.org.